Good evening. My name for tonight is Sergei Mokhrov. You may use my presentation later in any way you want. I'll make it available for download, including the audio. But if you are to publish the video, that is how my face should look like. I've got enough haters and stalkers going after me, and unlike Oksana Pushkina, I don't get paid for this. So please understand. I was married for 12 years, has been divorced for 10, had an experience in parental alienation, but now I am the custodial parent of a 17-year-old son. I am an involved uncle of six, an author and a blogger from the manosphere. I associate myself with Mechtel philosophy. I am a translator and an organizer of the recent Moscow screening of the Red Peel documentary to commemorate the International Men's Day, November the 19th. We are already planning the next translation and screening. I got an invitation to this event tonight via an editor of Masculis.ru website. I definitely can't speak from all the Russian men's movement, but from a large part of it, yes, I can. I'm not quite sure what my role here tonight is supposed to be. I guess to play either the devil or the devil's advocate. Well, I'll do my best. But before I begin, I'd like to name several women. Any one of them would do much better job tonight than me. Some of them spent their life in the field, some have PhDs, and they are all native English speakers. So maybe for the next time it's worth to consider inviting them, at least via Skype or something. Okay, let's start. How do you like the Empress's new clothes? If I don't see the wonderful embroidery, there is something wrong with me. The campaign suggests that the new clothes is domestic violence. Sorry, I don't see it. First of all, I don't get why they are undressed. Some even down to transparent underwear. Why is it written on them, I didn't want to die, in past tense? Unclear. What is the child doing here? Dressed, but with some strangely photoshopped eye. I guess first we painted a black eye for her too but then decided that it was too much and erased it. Now it seems she's got two left eyes. I've heard that sometimes women while attacking men hold their children high as a shield. Is that what it's about? If I was to come here with my little niece, would my words matter more? Would it made me automatically right? What are these women doing here? Playing our emotions? Usually when we see half-dressed women in ads, Somebody is trying to sell us something. So, what are they selling? Second, from the photo I can clearly see that all the participants, including the makeup artist, they don't know how the real consequences of a punch to the face look like. I could tell, as early as in the third grade, that these are fakes. My nephew, who unfortunately had to contact the police on this exact subject just last month, could tell that these are fakes. Third, and the saddest, is that the target audience, the public, also can tell the difference. What I conclude from all this, none of participants here have had any contact or knowledge of what they are trying to portray. And that is strange, because the true photos are easy to find on the internet. You just need to know what to look for. Yes, they wouldn't look pretty. Not so glamorous. Again, somebody is selling us something with all the usual techniques of advertisement. Two special photos. I don't recognize the rest, although they do look familiar. But these two are blogger and a social activist Sasha Mitroshina and the senator Alena Popova, both engines of that recent DV law reform that is now under discussion on the Federation Council website. It is clear that neither of them has any idea what these marks really look like. And if they did, they would probably be very reluctant to reenact these events. Technically, I could participate in such a photo shoot. I clearly have had more personal experience to participate in such a photo shoot than all of them combined. But I would probably choose not to. The background photo is a Western ad on the same topic. Can you see domestic violence? That's the first part of the series. Notice the slight asymmetry in the face. They did their homework a bit better, but still, that is also a fake. As for selling something, here is just one example. 
Sasha Mitroshina and domestic violence are being repackaged and resold with a new fashionable bank card. In contrast, the men who drew this, they did know what to draw. So there is more truth here than in the previous photos. I have a very strange feeling towards this International Day on Violence Against Women, November the 25th. What would you say if I proposed to establish a national ophthalmology of the left eye day? That is approximately how I feel. What about the right eye, so to say? US data from CDC. Half of all domestic violence is reciprocal. In other studies they call it mutual, bilateral, two-way. The other half is 70% female perpetrated. More than twice the percentage of male perpetrators. Doesn't look like the photos in the beginning, does it? More US data, quoted by Warren Farrell. Women outnumber men in almost all categories of physical violence. Women are twice as likely to attack first as men. Wife beating dropped more than 50% from 1975. Whereas husband beating stays on the same level. The media's favorite for portrayal of domestic violence. The punch. Almost three times more female perpetrators. To hit with something, almost two times more female perpetrators. UK data, as quoted by Shepard and Cleary. 29% and 26%, the victim ratio between women and men correspondingly. In physical violence, 13% by 13% equal. But 1 in 3 women reported to the police, whereas 1 in 20 men did the same. Also from UK, the famous civil activist Erin Pizzi, who appeared in the Red Pill documentary, opened the first DV shelter ever in UK. Right after opening a house for women, she immediately opened one for men. From the earliest times she said that at least half of women in the shelter were as violent as the men they fled from, and also violent towards their children. Erin was terrorized to such an extent that she finally had to leave UK. Maybe Russia can ask about her fate in the European Human Rights Court. Maybe UK is missing some crucial laws, who knows. But enough irony. It is often said that the testosterone is the hormone of anger and violence. Seems doubtful, given the data stated earlier. Men have 15 to 20 times as much testosterone as women. There is data that in lesbian couples the domestic violence level is higher than in heterosexual. And this picture from the United Nations page dedicated to November the 25th probably portrays the wrong shadow over the woman. A sequel to the campaign poster I showed earlier. Don't turn your blind eye. So now she's supposed to be without the makeup she wore before. The photo is still a fake, and now it's even easier to see. Again, given the data above, don't turn your blind eye. Indeed. Is there an analogy to this one-sided presentation in the media? An analogy on the personal level? I believe there is. On the part of the actor, it could be the narcissism. It is okay when I do it, but it is not okay for you to do it, and even not okay for you to talk about me doing it. On the part of the enabler, it could be parental favoritism. I bet most practicing psychologists would agree that such situation is not healthy to any of the parties, and normally needs intervention or therapy. On the social level, some people call it misandry, but I believe that the proper ungendered term is yet to be found. Well, what about the right eye, so to speak? Is there anything special to it? As an example, parental alienation. At best, the ratio of female to male alienators is 2 to 1. But if we use a quote from Dr. Richard Gardner personally, I call the alienating parent in order to avoid the problems of being labeled a sexist because more often the mothers and the fathers are the alienators and 
uh, uh, one says the mother, you get criticized. Anyway, there were, the, there were fathers, 10, 15 percent of cases in my experience. The father is the primary alienator and the mother is the victim. Gardner talks about only 10 to 15 percent of fathers alienators. What else? Paternity fraud. The ratio is undefined because it's almost impossible for a man to commit a maternity fraud. Есть интересное исследование про семьи, где показано, что очень теплые отношения в семье на таком эмоциональном уровне, на уровне поддержки друг друга могут сочетаться с семейной изменой. То есть до 30% детей в семьях, как выяснилось, могут быть зачаты вообще вне брака. Yes, he just said that up to 30% of all children can be paternal fraud. I'm sorry, Alexander Vicherin, nothing personal. I wasn't looking for this quote. I simply completed that online psychology course from HSE not long ago. Pity now they might censor your lecture. But I happen to know about the person Alexander cited, Dr. Robin Baker. And this number, up to 30%, is well known to me. And believe me, that is not the most shocking of numbers one can get from Dr. Baker. But at this moment, my focus is different. Let's pretend. Someone just said there is scientific data that up to 30% of children could have been wrongfully exchanged in delivery rooms. That up to 30% of children were not their biological mothers. Can you fathom the outcry that would arise? The court cases that would arise? The wave of violence that would arise? Do you think some women would kill or hire someone to kill persons responsible? Would you blame them? Or would you demonstrate your understanding of the mother's feelings? Now let's review how this scientific fact is passed during a routine psychology lecture. Yep, up to 30% of children can be paternal fraud. Next slide. No national outcry. Take into account that this issue could be very easily solved on the modern healthcare level. Mandatory DNA testing before issuing birth certificate. In some Western countries, people have been fighting for this for the last decade with no success. Next. Things that would be very interesting to talk about, but for which we have no time tonight. Psychological abuse, especially long-lasting. There's a lot of data that women far outnumber men in this department. Violence towards children, including genital mutilation, done routinely and within the law and psychological violence to our children, including parental alienation. Again, women outnumber men. Violence by proxy, or violence through a third person. Women several times outnumber men. Violence by abuse of law, such law as that exact DV law that is under discussion now. Reproductive violence, sperm jacking, paternity fraud, contraception sabotage, to name a few. I hope I provided enough information to explain why I am skeptical even about the headlines such as of tonight's conference. To summarize, I believe our society has a curious group disorder, and it still waits for its first true therapies to appear, to look at it with both good eyes. Meanwhile, our modern solemn trials are gaining spin, and I believe that that is unhealthy for both boys and girls, both men and women. Thanks. If we have time, I'll try to answer your questions. Вот это, если забыл про годовщину. А вот это, если забыл про день рождения. А для готовки-то какая? Да любая супер. Это ж тифаль.